As we approach the tail end of the year, I hope you're preparing for some amazing memories with your family and loved ones. Now, one of the things that my wife and I enjoy doing, especially during the festive season, is to get some family, some friends over, play some games with them. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five of my favorite games that are easy enough to pick up, quick to play, quick to instruct everyone, not too many rules involved, and yeah, just creates for some amazing memories. Uh, they also make really great gifts. So if you're scratching your head thinking, what well, should I buy so-and-so for Christmas? Uh, do consider some of these games. So let's dive into number one. So the first game is Don't Get Got. Uh, Don't Get Got is a party game. One of the best things about this game is it doesn't, you don't need people to be seated on a table together. You can play it while everyone is doing different things as well. So really quick game, easy to learn. Basically every player gets a sleeve like that um, and you have six inserts in it. You basically get different challenges and whether you achieve the challenge, you either nail it or, or you fail the challenge. Now I'll give you an example. So this one says, um, get a player to take a sip out of your drink. Um, hide this card in a jar and get a player to open it. Uh, this one says, say a player's name just slightly wrong and get them to correct you. So basically, just a heap of challenges. Everyone gets different, different challenge cards uh, and then you just, yeah, the first person to achieve all six of them wins the game. So nice and easy. So that's don't get caught. Number two on our list is No Thanks. Now this is a great uh, game, it's a great gift as well. It's really small, so if you have people traveling from overseas uh, and you wanna give them something that doesn't take up too much of space, uh, check out this game. The concept is really simple. You can teach it in about 30 seconds, which I will try right now. Um, you, essentially what you're trying to do is you're either trying to pick up cards or you're trying to skip cards. If you're gonna skip a card, you're gonna put a black token on it uh, if you take a card, you're going to take the card with any black tokens on it. The objective of the game is to make sure that you end the game with the lowest combined value of cards in hand. So for example, if I ended the game with 3, I'm doing pretty well. If I ended the game with 33, I am struggling. If I ended the game with 33 and 35, that's a combined value of 68, uh, chances are I'm not going to win. So there's this constant struggled, uh, struggle as to whether I should pick up a card or I should play a token. Uh, and if there are many tokens on it, maybe I should take a risk and pick up the card now so they can use the tokens for later. That's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, so it was a great game, great gift, good fun. Game number three is one of my favorites. It's called Secret Hitler. This one plays up to 10 players, so it's good if you have a larger uh, group of people over as well. Um, it is a social deduction game. So basically what it means is, um, say 10 of you are playing together, um, seven of you are good guys, three of you are the bad guys. Everyone is trying to decide who are the bad guys because the bad guys are hiding um, like wolf among the sheep. Um, so we're trying to we're trying to pick out who the bad guys are and in this case It's liberals versus fascists and the fascists are trying to pass fascist policies and elect Hitler as the chancellor So the liberals are trying to prevent that from happening and to do that they've got to Pay attention to how the game is being played uh, Why did someone pass a fascist policy? Why did someone pass a liberal policy? Is this person good? Is it this person bad? Is there some kind of chemistry going on between these two players that doesn't seem quite right? Uh, look, this game gets really feisty, so make sure you play with the right group of people. Uh, if, if people get offended easily and all that, it's probably not one for them, but yeah, it is, it is competitive. There's a lot of talking going on. Uh, one of my favorites, so check it out. Secret Hitler. Game number four is one that's wildly popular and that's code names. You can pretty much pick it up anywhere, JB, Hi-Fi, Kmart, Target, yeah, you, you will definitely see this, you can't miss this game. Uh, it's an extremely famous game and fantastic. It plays up to eight players. Uh, essentially what happens is there are two teams of players. Uh, each team has someone called the Spy Master. The Spy Master is trying to give clues and the teammates are trying to guess what the clues are. So in this case, I'll give you an example. So there are cards laid out on the table uh, in a five by five grid, so 25 cards. Imagine I'm the spy master and I'm trying to get you to guess two words on the grid. I might say round two, because the two cards I'm trying to get you to guess. So if I say round two, you might look at all the cards, all the 25 words, and you might think, oh yeah, uh, Jupiter is probably one, Jupiter is a planet, it's round. Uh, marble, is he talking about like the stone marble or is he talking like a uh, like the round marble. Well, a marble is round, so maybe these are the two clues. You might think that. However, if on the 25 card grid, if there was a ball there, you might be, oh, 
what about ball? Ball is round as well. Maybe that's what he's talking about. So that's that. Um, I guess you, you'd kind of try and read into what your spy master is saying. The spy master has to be careful not to give you the wrong clues because if you guess a card that's not for my team but for the other team, they get the points as well. So really great game. Only takes about five minutes to explain and you can have hours of fun with this one. Code names. Do check it out. Now last but not least, but the best on the list is just one. Also an easy game to pick up, a great gift for all ages. You can pretty much start playing it within 20 seconds. There's nothing to it. Now what it is is basically this. Say for example, I'm playing with a group of uh, six others. I pick up a card, I tell everyone the number that I'm looking for, so I say five. So I don't know what number five is. Everyone else can see um, the word. All they're gonna do is they're gonna write one word uh, as a clue that will help me guess what the card is. So everyone writes their own one word. So I've prepared a few words over here. So for example, I see all this. Now, these are three unique words and I'm, so I can look at them and when I look at them, it helps me to get an idea of what the word is. The problem is, let's say for example, two players write the same word. If the same word is written, these words get negated, so I don't get to see these clues. Uh, so instead of seeing five different clues, I can only see three. So then based on the three words that I see, that's when I'll try and guess what the words are. So I see switch, shock, and zap, I might think, oh, is the word electricity. That's how the game is played. So really great game, great gift, and it's easy to just pull out, start playing, have a couple of rounds together. It is a cooperative game as well. And, and yeah, have some laughs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, obviously nothing to do with real estate, but it's the time of the year where we're inviting people into our homes or we are visiting others in their homes as well. So giving you some gift ideas to uh, spread joy and enjoy some uh, amazing memories with your loved ones. So Navin from Harcourt's Greater Springfield, wishing you a fantastic lead up to Christmas and New Year and wishing you all the best. Bye-bye.